Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. Now, before I get into the introduction for this next lesson in our Learn Avid's Media Composer tutorial series, there's a couple things that I want to address because I receive an overwhelming amount of emails really focusing on two subjects. The first one is, you know, Kevin, I really like your tutorial series, and I'd like to sort of go to one central location that I can go to, you know, every couple of days to see if there's any updates you know, so I can see all of the tutorials sort of in one shot. Is there a way that I can do this? And you know what? There actually is a way that we can do that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to Alt-Tab into Firefox, or obviously Command-Tab for all my Mac friends out there. And the site that I want you to bookmark is library.creativecow.net slash series slash learn dash avids dash media dash composer. You'll see if you head over to that URL, what you're going to be brought to is a page that's going to contain all of the different lessons that we're doing for this tutorial series. You'll see we start all the way up at the beginning with getting started, then the interface and intro to bins, audio settings, bins part one, bins part two, capturing, and of course, right where we just left off with capturing part two and the composer settings. This is a great one-stop shop to go to for all of the tutorials in this specific series on Media Composer. Now, these aren't the only tutorials, obviously, that I've done or the ones that I've done about Media Composer because that brings me to the next question I'm asked all the time. You know, Kevin, I really appreciate you going through, you know, as in-depth as you do, but I really just want to get in and I want to learn editing quick. Is there a quick way for me to get in and learn Media Composer because I really have a project that I need to do? Well, a little while back, I did a tutorial series called Wanna Switch, sort of a boot camp for Final Cut Pro editors on a quick way to get into Media Composer and sort of do a project right from start to finish. And what I would suggest you do if you want to sort of skip ahead and not get as in-depth right away, just sort of get in, learn the basics, maybe come back to this later, is if you head on over to leaders.creativecow.net slash leaders slash McAuliffe Kevin, you're going to notice that in here you're not only going to find the Learn Avid's Media Composer tutorial series colored in purple, but if you scroll all the way down, you keep scrolling, 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 you'll see a lot of tutorials in here. You're going to get to my Want to Switch tutorial series. You'll remember the Avid tutorials are colored in purple, and you'll see that what we have is a very abbreviated look at how to get in and do a project from start to finish. You'll see Lesson 1, Projects and User Settings. Lesson 2, Digitizing and Importing. Lesson 3, Bins and Project Organization. Lesson 4, Editing. Lesson 5, Effects and Titling. And last but certainly not least, Lesson 6, Outputting. So again, not only a great way to catch up on all the other tutorials that I've done, but a great way just to sort of get in and do sort of a, you know, a one to two hour boot camp on Media Composer to really be able to get in and just rough something out in Media Composer really quick if you've got a client sitting next to you. Okay, so now that I've got that covered, let's talk about what we're going to cover in this lesson and that is exporting. You know, we're going to get to editing in the next couple lessons, and believe it or not, once you see editing, you're going to see that editing is really actually the easiest part of working in Media Composer. Really the hardest part is knowing all the additional little bells and whistles, things like import settings, and most importantly, especially when you're done, things like export settings, because in many cases, you're going to be exporting your files for DVD or Blu-ray. You're going to be exporting them to send approval files to clients. And you're going to want to make sure that you export these files from Media Composer correctly. So in this lesson, we're going to take a look at exporting, and we're going to take a look at the export settings that go along with them. Okay, so let's just Alt-Tab into Symphony, obviously a Command Tab for all my Mac friends out there. And let's delete these two layers of video here. And we'll just select our one layer of video. I'm just going to select the entire clip here. You'll see we got a duration. There we go, the center duration of 7 seconds and 26 frames. And what I'm going to do is head back to the settings, and you're going to notice for export that I only have one option. Right now it's called H.264 for approval widescreen. What I'm going to do is simply double click on it, and once it opens, you're going to see I'm now greeted by the export window. Now I know that this might look a little bit daunting, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the process of how you're going to export one thing. And in this case, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to create an export using a QuickTime with animation codec. Why not? So let's talk about how we're going to do that. You see we have a whole bunch of different options in here based on what we want to export. We have AVI as an option. We can export still graphics, just audio, even Windows Media. But for what we're going to do right now, we are going to need a QuickTime Movie. So what I'm going to do is select QuickTime Movie. Now if I wanted to export the clips from my timeline with the same codec and compression and information that I'm using in my timeline, what I could do is simply just say export same as source, use the Avid codecs, 
use video and audio if I happen to have video and audio. You'll see you can get in and set the QT audio option. In most cases, depending on how you're working, you'll probably be exporting stereo. But back in video formats, really all you have to do is select what color levels you want. In most cases, you'll stick with the native dimensions and you're pretty much ready to output. But anything else other than exporting with the Avid codec requires a little bit more work. What we need to actually do is come up and select custom, because in this case, we're going to do a custom export. Like I said, we're going to do an animation codec. Now I'm working at 1280 by 720, because with the animation codec, remember, we're not working in DVC ProRes. We're going to be working in true 1280 by 720. And in this case, what I'm going to do is select video only. So let's move down now and let's select our width and height. What I'm going to do is just drop down my width and height. I'm going to select 1280 by 720 because that's going to be the frame size of the clip that I'm exporting. Obviously, we're going to size it to fit, but I don't really need to worry about that because the composition is already going to be that size. We're going to select RGB color levels, and I'm going to make sure that I'm working in the native dimensions. You'll see right here, 1280 by 720. Now, here's where things get a little bit tricky and a lot of people sort of get a little bit confused. Most people think that they're ready to export, but what's important to keep in mind is that what's happening is, is that Media Composer is remembering whatever the last custom codec I exported with to reference it for this export, which is not what we want. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to the Format Options. You'll see H.264 because that's what I had used as the template is what's selected. So all I'm going to do is click on Settings. You'll notice that this window looks pretty familiar to anyone that's used QuickTime before. All I'm going to do is navigate up to the compression type. I'm simply going to select animation. We're going to use the current frame rate of the current timeline. I'll set the keyframes automatically. Make sure the quality is set to best. And I don't want to have an alpha with this export, so let's just select millions of colors. I'm going to say OK. I'm not going to prepare for internet streaming. And once I say OK, there's two last little things that I need to do. You're going to notice right up here at the top, I have two checkboxes, one that says use marks, meaning use in and out point, which I normally select, and also to use the enabled tracks. So whatever tracks I have turned on is what's going to get exported. What's not turned on is not going to get exported. Last but certainly not least, what I want to do is simply say OK, and now we'd be ready to export this clip with the animation codec. Now, Here's where things got a little bit tricky, only because I only have one export setting. You'll see right now it's called H.264 for approval widescreen. But you'll remember we just came in and we set this all up to be the animation codec. So what I can just do is simply say cancel and I can rename this animation codec. But this is going to get a little bit annoying if every time I want to export something I have to keep changing the settings. Well, you don't need to do that at all. What I can actually do is simply, I'm just going to deselect export and reselect it, is I'm just going to duplicate that export setting. What I can do now is simply double click on this new export setting, and let's just say hypothetically I wanted to do that H.264 file. Well, you know what? No problem. What I can do now is come in. I can simply select H.264. Let's just restrict it to, oh, I don't know, 1,000 kilobits per second. We'll set it to automatic. Make sure that's best quality and say OK. There's no sound, obviously, but we'll prepare for internet streaming. I'll say OK, and I'll say OK again. And now I can simply call this H.264 for client approval. So you'll see this is how I can get in and start creating multiple different export settings very quickly and very easily inside of Media Composer. Now, remember, you can have really as many export settings as you want but you're going to find out real quick that you're really going to sort of whittle it down to probably about three or four that you use on a regular basis, which is pretty much what I do. Now, if I wanted to switch between the two of them, all I need to do is simply just switch the checkbox, and now this is ready to export as H.264 or ready to export as animation. And let me show you what I mean. I'll just simply come up here. We'll just say export. I'll bring it right back to the desktop here. It's called layered sequence. I'll just say save. You'll see in a matter of seconds we have this clip on our desktop. I'm just going to minimize Media Composer here for a second. I'm just going to double click on it. And you'll see that once it opens, I can navigate up to Window. I can say Show Me the Movie Inspector. And you'll see that the format is animation. Now there's one last thing that I do want to show you. This is another way that you can get in and quickly create presets inside of Media Composer for your export settings. I'm just going to come back in a symphony here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to say Export. And let's just come into our options for one second here. And let's say hypothetically I wanted to export, I don't know, let's just say a still image. You'll see that the window is set up exactly the same 
Nothing looks any different, but there is one thing that's slightly different. And I'm going to show you that in just a second. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate up to Export As. I'm going to drop that down, and I'm simply just going to say Graphic. You'll see now I can choose the graphic format. Maybe I'll just choose, oh, I don't know, JPEG. You'll see I can come into the Format Options. We'll choose the best quality here. Let's just drag that right up, say OK. 1280 by 720 obviously is correct. RGB will stick with. I could export sequential files if I wanted to, but I only want to have one file. But what's important here is you'll notice I have a new button down here called Save As. What I'm going to do is just drag the export settings over here. I'm going to say Save As, and I'm going to call this 1280 by 720 HD JPEG. And you're going to see that as soon as I say Save, it's going to appear over here as another export option. Now in this case I don't want to be exporting anything sequential so what I'm going to do is just simply say save. It's going to ask me where I want to save this to, just to the desktop is fine. I'll simply say save and you'll see now if I come to the desktop I've got that image right here and I can double click on it. Now what's important to keep in mind is you'll see that this is my hang glider but if I come back into Symphony I'm sitting on the boxer. Now why would that be? Well you'll remember I told Symphony right here, I'm just going to come back here for one second, I told Symphony to use the marks and to use the enabled tracks. Well you got to remember, using the marks means start at the endpoint. Well guess what the endpoint is? The endpoint looks a little something like that. If I minimize Symphony you'll see there's that first frame exported exactly as I told it to. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at Gmail Dot com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.